I'm just playing today by ear because the the pain of the kidney mm. stones is just like. Yeah, right. How's how you doing there? Oh, I'm hanging in there. I'm I'm sorry going through that. I won't. I'll try to make this like as distractible as possible. <laughs> this is the See best it. distraction. Like Star Trek, it, or any 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 kind of uh, nerd thing is like the best distraction. On Wednesday, I went to the hospital, and so I haven't been able to do really anything. So I've just been, you know, reading books and writing. I mean, that's helpful, but again, there's nothing quite like that one thing that you can turn to and everything else can just kind of fizzle out. And there's nothing else, but in your case, but Star Trek. Well, let's, let's start with the, uh, the article that you, uh, that you shared. Ready for super nerdy intro, take one. <coughs> Labor fun times, and this is the very first installment of whatever the fuck we're gonna call this. Um, my guest today is Marzi Malfoy. Marzi, say hello. Hello, how are you, Al? Marzi, what were we gonna talk about today? Star Trek. Star Trek! <laughs> um, the reason, Marzi, I had you on is because I found a fascinating article about a guy from New York who has recreated this, the original Star Trek set from scratch like he built it all himself as someone who is my local expert in all things star trek how did he do <laughs> have you seen the pictures I, i've seen the pictures and i actually knew of the guy all right and the reason why uh he okay how he accumulated all that stuff is he actually wrote the uh set designers or so i can somebody, somebody worked, yeah somebody that worked for star trek uh, they sent him like all the blueprints and schematics and all that and all that jazz, and so he he created all this uh, with the help of other Star Trek fans, friends, and family. And pretty much the reason why he wanted to do this is because he does the fan show, fan Star Trek show, Star Trek: The New Voyage, or New Voyages, or so, so, something. Along those lines. I kind of love the idea that this giant nerd just went, took it upon himself to recreate the set to do a fan show for the show. Is that typical for most Star Trek Trekkies? Oh yeah, there uh, there's a lot of uh, fan like fi fan films that I've I've seen that are really good. Yeah, my favorite one has Uhura, Nichelle Nichols. Oh cool! And she has the best line from any kind of Star Trek. It's something about genocide by the same name is still genocide, no matter how you look at sure. it. Sure, there is no justification for something that like that. Oh my God, that, that was probably the best line I've ever heard in any Star Trek. And it wasn't even a, it was an actual- It was not non-canonical. Non <laughs> I actually yeah. was thinking of you last night because we had dinner, we got Indian food, and then we watched uh, Star Trek beyond so my my exposure to star trek is so super limited however the star trek beyond felt like a bunch of episodes kind of spliced together and then i missed an episode somewhere <laughs> I, I i did like the the movies the new movies uh it, it although you have to go into it knowing that it's not the prime universe to some people that rubs them the wrong way uh but i have no problem with that i mean one of the big things in Star Trek Enterprise was they still had a military force on Earth called the Makos. Uh, they were the they were pretty much the Space Marines, and they were um, not a big part of it, but they were a good part that you don't see anywhere else because right after Enterprise uh, ended, it they disbanded the Makos, and uh, in the movie they mention it and. The, the main protagonist uh, was a former Mako, and he was one of the ones that, you know, they completely, after they disbanded the Makos, he just, he was just like, well, what do I do now? A Marine. You can't just That's... move a Marine to something non-combative and expect him to completely comply immediately. There's got to be some sort of trans transfer, uh, tra transition, uh... and there wasn't. No, they, they, uh, I, my heart kind of went out to him. I mean, A, because it was Idris Elba, but B, I mean, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. You can't take someone whose entire existence has revolved around, uh, and I'm speaking out my arse here, 
who's revolved around like routine and here are your orders, this is your hierarchy, do this, do that, to sit down and fly this plane. Here you go. Yeah. And be be a pilot of some sort of commercial airliner, basically. Oh, go ahead and you have the freedom to do whatever you want. That's absolute chaos for someone. So I'm like, of course he did what he had to do. <laughs> It made total sense to me. I don't agree that he did all that stuff. I mean, no. it was it was wrong. What he did was wrong, but it's understandable. As, as a veteran myself, who yep. kind of had the same issue uh, when I got out, because I was just like completely like, oh, well, we don't need you anymore. Out. Well, now what do I do? You know, so yeah. I kind of had the same. Thing. I didn't go. I didn't go down the path that he <laughs> went. I didn't go mass murdering and and changing changing the way I look and everything. <laughs> but but, but you, you still had to have some sort of transition, and if the support's not there, then what do you expect the person to then, how, how do you expect them to react? It's yeah, not exactly. going to be hunky-dory. And that's the thing, uh, I had a lot of family and stuff to support me. He probably, I don't know if he had family, uh, but he was mostly, you're on a ship. In that era, you did not have families on board the ship. He had no family around him. All he had were other, uh, Starfleet and you know it's still like a military thing you don't just go to your mil military buddies that are below you and vent about that kind of stuff you just don't and so he had no support he had no no one to really turn to yeah and I, I kind of love that because yes we're flying through space and yes there's a distant planet and there's shapeshifter age shifter something some sort of vampiric type of technology but no, it's a it's a it's a real case. It's a real life uh, case study. <laughs> this this happens when there's no therapy behind your 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 decisions. Star Trek takes real world problems and puts it in a sci-fi format so that anyone can either understand what's going on or relate. I love that. That was a good conversation. <laughs> Um, but I think for, for the moment, let's go back to our friend from New York. The the inspiration for today's, uh, episode? I don't really know what to call this again. I don't know what I'm doing! Anyway, I'm very impressed with his, this super fan's dedication. How does it look to you? Like, just the pictures that you've seen, does it, is it on point? Does it need work? How does it look like? It is totally on point. He, it, you can tell, he took the care and dedication it needed to put that together uh the only like uh i think one of the differences was um is that he used led lights for the transporters yeah the led lights were probably the only things that were not the exact material but now he was on point with everything if you were invited onto his set what would you do uh i would find a transporter and get over there immediately <laughs> But, but like, would you would you uh, be a character? Or would you be a set uh, crew member? Whatever he needed. All right. <laughs> Even if it's holding drinks for for everyone, and because you know I've been in um, like stage production uh, for a very long time. It doesn't matter what part you play, whether you're on the camera or not, you're still very important. No, I uh, my job in college I was a stage manager and it was so important for me to tell like like you don't understand you all have like you're all cogs in this giant machine and you all need to yeah. be here and on point and just get it done some really nerdy questions um for you and this is sort of the ports port <laughs> parts where ports hi <laughs> the port I'm gonna call this the mom or grandma test Marzi um, to everyone watching, could you kindly ex um, explain Star Trek in a manner that my mom or my grandma might be able to appreciate? Alright, so I'll explain it the, the same way I've I explained it to my mom. Because she doesn't know, she doesn't understand sci-fi. Star Trek is a show that not only shows the parallelism between our cultures and other cultures on Earth, to cultures from other planets, but it also shows where our goals as human beings should be. In Star Trek, in the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th century, humans eliminated poverty. There's no currency on Earth, and there hadn't been any wars in like a hundred years. And that is where ideally we would love to be. 
and and we have the hope that one day we will be there and that is what this show is trying to show that we do have that potential to do this the show is so hopeful yeah you're right it has like look what we could be but you yeah. just need to you need some imagination to get there it's not impossible it's not a uh, an impossibility it's just going to take us a really long time to get there what so your mom doesn't understand star trek where did your interest in star trek come from if not her or not family uh actually my my dad used to watch it when i was growing up Aww. he had he had to stop watching it in front of me because Worf scared the crap out of me oh i was terrified growing up of star trek <laughs> Right, so wow. I get, I get into the military. It's 2007. I'm 21 or 22 years old at the time. And I'm stationed in England and I've got nothing to do during the weekend. So I'm in the library and they have every single episode of Star Trek. And I'm like, well, I'll, I'll just see what it's all about. Maybe laugh at it a little bit. So I'm, I'm putting it in and I thought I was going to laugh at it, but I was laughing with it because it was so hilarious. And then I was crying at the very end of the entire series because it was over. I'm like, this Star Trek is over. And my, my friend is like patting me on the back. Here, like, yeah, Garrett, it's, it's okay. There's another, there's another series. There's Deep Space Nine. It, it's not over. It's not the same. I understand. <laughs> I, I go and I get Deep Space Nine. And that ended up being my favorite. I, I had no hope for it, but it ended up being my favorite. It wasn't something that you grew up with. You were a, I'm gonna use the term, late bloomer. I didn't even like alien stuff growing up. Uh, I had the nickname, uh, and this, this is where Marzi comes from. I had a nickname, uh, Mars. Ah, uh, nice. Yeah, ever since I can remember, because my brother, and this is why I didn't like alien stuff for the longest time. My brother convinced me that uh, him and my mother found me in the field <laughs> and they took me home. And so I believed this. I love this years. story so much. <laughs> and I told my friends this and they just started calling me Mars. And I just adopted it. Like, sure, own it. Everyone. At what point, or was there a moment uh, while you're discovering Star Trek, was there a moment that it went from casual interest to super fan? <laughs> Deep Space Nine. Okay. When I was watching it, because uh, I don't know if you know the premise of, or the, any of the plots of Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine takes place after, like, it's on a space station called Deep Space Nine. Uh, it used to be called Carrick Nor, was placed right above orbiting a planet called Bajor. Now before, Starfleet got there and they renamed it Deep Space Nine. As I said, it was Tarek Nor. It was run by Cardassians who were occupying Bajor uh, and pretty much did the exact same thing that the Nazis did in Europe. So this is taking place after all this. We're watching the rebuilding. We're watching how all, all these people, all these characters are going through this transformation from either Star, uh, Starfleet Green, uh, what do you call it? He just graduated from the academy, so he's wet behind the ears. That's where I was going. There you go. Like, going from a baby to, oh my god, he just grew in these past few years from from that because of this, this situation. Having to treat the wounded, the plagues, and seeing the, the psychology of the Bajorans, uh, how each, each Bajoran dealt with the aftermath and and then even some Cardassians, Garrett, who was an exile of Cardassia, how he dealt with his exile and his own sordid past and that he regretted. I can relate to a lot of this stuff because I was I was in the military. I had I saw a lot of this kind of stuff myself. And it was about the same time that I was going through it and watching them transform kind of helped me uh, deal with all the stuff that I was witnessing. I get you. If that, yeah, if that makes any sense. It totally does. And, and it, it makes sense how that had such a huge impact on your life. And I'm really happy that you found it. <laughs> Is that makes that nothing brings me more joy than hearing other people saying I love this. It's helped me through this. Do you have a favorite actor or character from any of the series that you were more drawn to than others? Garrett, uh, uh, because uh, he he did uh, things in the 
uh, well, he, he wasn't in the military, but he was part of the Obsidian Order. And, and you know, when you have orders, you, you have to obey them, even if you don't agree with it. And But with him, but with Cardassians, you know, there's no, there is no uh, questioning or not following order no matter what it is. Every military member will tell you, no matter what field they were in, there's something that is bothering them. And the way he dealt with his like PTSD really related to me so much that it was just like, yeah, th this is this is my character, this is me in this in in Star Trek, this is me in real life. Have you ever uh, met the actor? No, I I wish I I could. Uh, his name is uh, Andrew uh, Andrew Robinson. He's the only Star Trek actor that uh, has ever written a book, uh, a Star Trek book in character that wasn't done by a ghostwriter. Cool. I, I'm assuming you read it. Oh, twice. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's called A Stitch in Time. Pretty much the aftermath of After Deep Space Nine. I love this so much. I'm so happy we did this. <laughs> Is there anything else that someone who has never seen Star Trek, <clears throat> such as my mom, but maybe someone else who is watching this, why should they why should they start? Uh, why should they start? Um, if, if they love, not even if they love sci-fi, because I've actually gotten people into even Star Trek online who isn't even a, like, they're not even a Star Trek fan, you know, this are the stories. And it is very story-based, it's very character-based. Um, character development is definitely a thing. It's mostly a thing in Deep Space Nine, um, but in even in TNG, you see a lot of character development. If someone wants a good story with great, uh, what do you call it? Great character development, any, or even if they like things blowing up, things always blow up in Star Trek. <laughs> I mean, there is a lot of dem the diplomacy and politics that go along with it, uh, but so, but if that's your thing, I mean, then, then there you go. There are so many aspects of Star Trek that anyone can enjoy. Like, not everyone likes the politics, not everyone likes the explosions, not everyone likes this, but maybe they like one of the other. So it's got it's got something for everybody. Good characters and explosions. I like it. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know I said this would take about 20 minutes. We're now 43 minutes in. <laughs> Oops. I know. I, 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 I talk a lot, too, when it comes to Star Trek. I, that's exactly what I was hoping would happen. Which is like, here's a couple of prompts. Go. Run. Talk. I think this is a good first episode. I think we should do another one. I think there should be another a Star Trek part two. I would love that. Nice. Yay, thank you so much for joining me today, Marzi. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my god, I'm st I'm stoked. Um, If you haven't subscribed to Marzi Malfoy, I'll put a link in the description below, but also here's a little i-card somewhere. So please go check out Marzi Malfoy on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, and then wherever else she does her things. But in the meantime, thank you guys so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you all stopping by. Please don't forget to... Give it a like and leave a comment and have a fun time today. We will see you all next time. Doodle boop. Bye. I know.